I am Doc, and this is the Sleuthcast with my co-host Pompey. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. And uh, good old Swiss. <laughs> 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 Fucking terrifying. Man. All right. So, episode two, we had a good first week of the Sleuthcast. If you haven't, go check it out on Apple Music. You can check it out on Amazon and Spotify. Sleuthcast, check it out. It's dope. Today's first topic we're going to do is unpopular opinions in gaming. And, uh, Fumpy. Hello. <laughs> how's it going? We're going to let Swiss start today, because he's got the best unpopular Sick. opinions. Boasting in my uh, ear here. Yes, he did. <laughs> Floppiness under control there, Fump. Uh, I don't know if I've got the best one um, as much as it probably ruffles the most feathers. Uh the GTA franchise, I, I think it's really stale, really boring, and I haven't been interested in it since, like, GTA 2. Uh, multiple reasons. Um, we covered in our previous podcast, I'm not a big fan of microtransactions, especially if it is just for aesthetics. Can't stand and that, that's all it is. That's all it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you guys can speak to that more than I can. Obviously, I don't play it. Um, I never cared for the game controls either. It's like they never bothered to actually make the physics and stuff like that run well and i get that in some ways it's more fun but uh i i've just never been a fan of that uh even the controls themselves the selection wheels and all that stuff i just don't care for how that all works um i also just uh never found their gameplay that interesting i mean they're groundbreaking in some things i mean first time you get to beat up a hooker in a game cool that novelty wears off real quick Um, no it doesn't don't lie to yourself That's the only thing I do. <laughs> punch hookers and random Clearly, people on the street, man. People. Clearly, for some people, it doesn't. But for this fair, yes, yes, it got old quick. Um, so I mean, you know, what do you guys think about GTA? Uh, you probably have way more experience playing it than I do, especially the newer stuff. I think the online gameplay is treacherous at best. Um, I, yeah. I just don't get it. I'm also not a fan of online hangout games where like. Oh, all we're going to do is this. Like, okay, well, that's sweet. We could also just get together and do something. Um, right. You know. Um, well, with me, since I actually spent uh, a, a fair amount of time on GTA Online, um, uh, you, you, you are 100% right. It's like you're, you're buying money to buy stuff that is clearly for just looks and for just flexing and showing off and everything. It's not prevalent to the game. It's just, it's, it's like I, uh, like I said, I think in the previous episode, you, I, I literally bought, or I spent a lot of money on this damn game so I can buy a damn bike because everybody else had this damn bike that you fly around and shoot rockets and they're like homing rockets. So it's like, you just, you just be a fucking asshole. That's all it is. Oh yeah. There's no point to it. There's no, uh, so yeah, no, like I, like I said, it's like you're literally spending money just to get some stuff to make you look cooler. Um, it does get stale very quickly, even if you do have friends. Um, and especially like online, uh, there's no holding hand. I mean, like not that I want to, my hand to be held throughout the thing, but like to get the casino harvest or whatever, you need to have an arcade. It doesn't tell you that. It's just like you want to buy an arcade. What the fuck's the arcade for? Yeah. And it's just like. And it's just very frustrating because uh, you don't know what the hell you want to do. And there's 110 things to do, but again, they all get stale. Yeah. So, and then it's finding just... the right missions, even if you want to like go racing or whatever, finding the right missions that are actually fun, mm. it's very hard. Yeah, I, the controls are a big one for me. It's so janky. Like you walk up to a car, you bump into it, then you back up, and then you go again and you open the door, <laughs> and then you just like jump in and you're speeding off instantly. It's crazy. Like, I don't understand that. The online play is very toxic. They're not very friendly to people. Um, they grief you outside of your house. You know, and, just, an, just another thing is, too, like, like, I'm sure they had a reason back then to do it, but like, who decided mashing X or A <laughs> was the way to run? Bro, like, they, that's I think so they dumb. did that when they had the turbo controller. You could just. I was going to say, dude, that's, that's from the original Xbox, like San Andreas. It's been like that. Uh, if it ain't broke, don't sequence. fix it, I guess. You know. Part of the opening sequence for that is you on a bike and to pedal faster, you have to tap. 
so that he actually stands up and starts to pedal and it just carried over to everything. It's just lazy game development, to be honest. It doesn't take much to change a button in your code. It's quite simple. Bitches, I see. Well, and I mean, I'm sure there are some that would, you know, respond back with, well, that's the gaming controls we know. So, you know, it, it needs to feel like a Grand Theft Auto game. But, Which, hey, yeah, I, I, I am somebody that would say that about a few other games, too. Um but like as much as I enjoy being able to pick up a Madden game and it feels like a Madden game, I wish Madden was better. Uh yes. <laughs> the same so, it's the same I think the controls you... if it it could feel like a Grand Theft Auto game, but the controls don't have to be shit. Yeah. You know. Right. It's only gonna enhance your experience instead of smashing X a hundred times to run around the corner. You can just like <laughs> hold it and you run. Same thing. It, it doesn't make any sense. So yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's Grand Theft Auto for me. Uh, not worth buying. <laughs> All right, Pumpkin, and, what is your take, dude? On what's your unpopular gaming opinion? Um, I forgot. <laughs> no, okay. Um, Battle Royales, trash. <laughs> really bad. Dude, that's and part I, of the problem with the the kids today. In this they game it. They play the battle royale for the instant gratification. You kill someone, their loot explodes on the floor. Like, hell yeah, look at all the good stuff I can grab. And that's the thing, too. It's like, cool, you want to play battle royale because it's uh, everyone can get... Uh, they can learn it very quickly, mm -hmm. which is cool. It's not rocket science or anything. So it's like, cool, learning the game, dying 110 times before you even get top 10, top 20 and everything. And the only thing at the end of the rainbow is the title of a victory royale like it's i understand that there is fun behind it but it again same thing with gta it, get, it gets stale there's no reward there's no uh gratification at the end of it in my opinion um i mean i'm strictly talking like call of duty and everything but it's, the same can be said with apex PUBG, uh fortnite it's like it's all i mean it's Talking about Fortnite, that's strictly like cosmetic too. It's like you, you buy the skins to get in the game. Be like, I got this skin, mm -hmm. and then I don't want to admit it, but my locker has like a thousand <laughs> skins. It's ridiculous. There's so many. I played since it launched. Like I've got. See, some. but you, you you've earned them. You didn't buy them. Uh, I bought a few. I bought the Kratos, the Aloy. I bought a dinosaur one when it first came out. Like a few. I think I spent maybe a hundred bucks on the game total in skins. Over the See, course I guess of seven years isn't bad, you know, when it's 20 bucks a skin, so. I guess it's a thing, too, like, because I probably, I did play the game. I would buy, I would buy Aloy just because uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, killer game. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a really amazing game. And so, like, I would, I guess I want people to know that I like the game. <laughs> like, I just think it's a, it's a dumb reason to do it, but I can understand doing it. But that's, again, that's why I'm happy, like, uh with Modern Warfare 2, how they introduced uh, DMZ, because it's a breath of fresh air where you can go in with different objectives and you don't have to kill people. Like Swiss here, he goes in, pistol, doesn't kill anybody, and gets out of there and still gets those objectives done. Like, you don't need to kill. There's no bloodlust unless you want it. <laughs> Facts, dude. Um, so I'm it's just like... <laughs> no, <not> <laughs> um it's just i don't know it's stale it's there's no reward for me so i just don't understand uh dedicating your hours of your day to doing this again i think it is just instant the, the instant gratification that is what the kids yeah. desire and those who play the game probably really like that like you get the win oh cool you get the thing you can emote you can do whatever but like i don't get it my unpopular opinion, <laughs> Skyrim is dog shit. Sorry. It's a terrible game. I don't like it, but I love Fallout, so it is really weird for me. I think the way they did it, where they, it's like, what, two, I played like 20 hours of it, and then I finally just got sick and tired of it. It's, I think, it felt very copied from like Fallout, like they, Fallout came out, and Skyrim came out shortly after and they use the same engine they just changed the names of everything it felt is it really that similar uh yes yeah yeah a hundred, real oh, it's almost like carbon oh, copy just different skins 
So is Oblivion and Fallout Three. Yeah, uh, it's it's that's I, the I'm worst big part. As a fan, I like both. Um, you're not wrong though. I mean, the uh, Skyrim franchise is just as broken as Oblivion was. So Oblivion had a really janky level up system. Skyrim had the same kind of thing. Like if you were an archer and went stealth within. 25 hours of gameplay, you could be nearly unbeatable. Mm -hmm. um, because the arrow, like your bow and arrow while sneaking, will ignore armor, you'll get a plus 8 to the attack, and plus by then you'll be able to get special bows and arrows that do extra fire damage and shit. So I mean... Yeah, so you're just a aspects, walking tank, yeah. Yeah, a aspects of the game get broken really quick. Um, as far as that goes, uh, the gameplay itself, too, is very point A, point B, which in Fallout, I can understand it being a little more uh, entertaining. More bandits, there's more things around and on the yeah. road as we're Skyrim. Skyrim, yeah, it's a lot less um, random AI and enemies to, to deal with. Whereas Fallout, you got Mirelurks and you got mole rats and super mutants and blood bugs and... Rabbit okay, house, so, all that shit as you're going from point A to point B. So for me who hasn't played these games, just a quick question, like what does Skyrim do that the others don't that makes it as popular of a game as it is? Uh the realm that it takes place in. Genre. Yep. So, so it, like, it's like medieval or... type. With dragons and <laughs> giants and just mythological stuff. And Fallout is so just post apocalyptic. Like, I'd say Skyrim's what? Elder Scrolls five? Yes. 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 So, the games themselves have a really rich history, and it's happened in a fairly decent span. Uh, the first and second game, not so much, but the last few have gotten a lot of attention and stuff that way. As where Fallout started off as a completely different game genre and game style, and was adapted into the, what it is now, so... <clears throat> But yeah, the the lore and the mythology and just the overall presentation of the Elder Scrolls franchise, it's a prettier place too. Um, Fallout is it's literally very dark and dreary. Yeah, atomic destroyed areas with mutated things. It's rough and ugly and meant to be that way. Yeah, I do know. Like with seventy six, they add they're adding more bright colored stuff in, like pristine machines and stuff that you could put in your camps and shit, but even then, it's still really dark and dreary. Well, and I'll, I'll even say for Skyrim, I thought Skyrim compared to Oblivion, the game before it. Oblivion is beautiful. Um, and it, it all has to do with where it takes place, too. Skyrim is a northern snowy area, so it, it's it's kind of dreary all the time. There's lots of snow, or snow there's storms in general. Um, so the game itself is kind of a darker, drearier color than going back to Oblivion, which is, uh, holy crap, I can't think of the name of it right now. Um, but it's a much brighter place, uh, Cyrodiil, a uh, much brighter, vibrant place, uh, kind of like Mid-South area type thing. Mm -hmm. There's always trees and waterfalls and stuff like that. So. Right on. So, but I can understand on that is Skyrim sucks. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I, I tried the Elder Scrolls Online because I got it for free, so I, I've been checking it out. It's not bad, but it's not my cup of tea. Like it's very monotonous. Wait, it's Sean, like... you said you disagreed. I disagree. I think Skyrim is a great game. I, I dug Skyrim. Um, I can understand the thought, but I, I would disagree. I think it's a solid game. I'm sure people you, disagree with. Yeah. Do you um, think that it, it is kind of copied paste from Fallout, like Dave said? Or like oh, for sure, okay. but I have the opposite view. Uh I've also played Fallout 4 and I have almost the same idea he has a Skyrim of Fallout 4. Uh it, we are literally just the difference of opinion in I, I prefer the Elder Scrolls lore over Fallout. While mm -hmm. I enjoy Fallout, this wasn't my cup of tea. Yeah. Uh, that's a good topic. I think the next topic is going to be good.
in your opinion. Wait, 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 wait. I had one more unpopular opinion. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, that's right. We don't want to forget that. Let's hear it. All right. Because I thought about this because I was researching before this. I think handheld gaming will never be good. No, uh, I agree. Wow. Yeah. I disagree. Um, I disagree. Hell, I, okay. I, wow. State your opinion. Oh, okay, so shit. <laughs> I'm not going to strictly go off sales, but I mean, like, the DS and the SP Game Boy, they did good sales. Um, but, like, I, I think the the quality of game that comes with the handhelds, not including the Steam Deck or the Switch, because those are, like, those are consoles in a hand sound. Those are mini consoles. So I'm thinking like uh what is the most recent one besides the Switch? I think it's the Vita. That was the most recent one, right? PlayStation Vita. Yeah. Yeah. Um and I, I had a PlayStation Vita. I got it for Christmas. Sat on it. Don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> um <laughs> the quality of games were shit. It just felt like I had a phone that I can just get a bunch of apps on. Like I played Jetpack Joyride. There was a couple of uh, fighting games that I had. Sorry. Yeah, all good. Um, uh, see. Go ahead. And then, so it's just like, I think the quality of game will never reach the standard because they, they're they they're limited. They only have a little, a little bit, like, little, like, components inside that it will allow it to compete with the bigger systems are they convenient yes i i do think i love the switch i love i can take it in the road and i can do all this stuff um i did like the thought of having a, a, a game boy sp when i was younger to do the same thing play my own little games but i don't like now going to the steam deck i think that's actually working really hard but they have a lot of a lot of problems with it one battery life two overheating uh so it's just like it, it as convenient as they want it to be it's actually becoming a little more inconvenient than mm-hmm. sitting down and playing a console uh in the current day and age i can i can agree and understand with that i feel like the cell phone has replaced uh handheld gaming consoles uh and that's really a change in the gaming number two nintendo did it right in so many ways they Mm -hmm. they designed and developed and had entire teams just for doing the game boy you know all game boy franchises um that's part of why they were so popular for a while i would even argue that the game boy ds carried uh nintendo for a while the gamecube did not go well no, I'm not saying it's a bad console. It's my least favorite from them, but it, oh, I love um, that one. Not the Wii, probably my least favorite from Nintendo, but um, <laughs> another unpopular opinion. Uh, but <laughs> GameCube to Switch, the only thing holding them up were handheld cells. Um, it's not just until recently here that people have hopped back on the bandwagon that the GameCube's awesome. It did terrible by comparison to what was going on at the time. Um, And honestly, if it wasn't for like Fire Emblem and some of those games like that, I I would challenge you that your opinion is based off of not having played enough quality games. That's fair. Um, Because most of those other consoles you're talking about that didn't last, one of their biggest faults was, well, I've I've got the console version. Let me put it on the handheld. It doesn't work that way. Like you said, it's a completely different operating system. Mm -hmm. And it's limited. So you need to make games for it, not port games to it. Um, yeah, and port I think is a terrible Nintendo idea. Hit everybody's ass with it. Um, but yeah, dude, like Fire Emblem, um, Pokemon, Jesus, Pokemon up until the Switch, I believe, was strictly a handheld console. Um, I mean, which, yeah, which Pokemon was killer. It wasn't Metroid, really good. Uh, even Metroid. That's the big one. Yeah, I played Metroid on uh, the on the GameCube. That's why I love GameCube. There's a whole franchise of Metroid games on the uh, Game Boys that are phenomenal, um, and they play almost identical to what a console version would. But so yeah, no, I, I wow, that's a hot take. Mm-hmm. 
Hot takes. All right. So, <laughs> in your opinion, what is the best video game soundtrack to ever be created? Uh, I'll go first here, just for the fact that I will have little opinions on this. Um, well, okay, I have two opinions on this. One, I did like the Last of Us soundtrack just because the guitar was just very, just relaxing. It was chill. Nothing, nothing spectacular about it. I just did because it was. It just fit the mood of the game very yep, well. Yep. Um, and then <laughs> uh, shoot me, but uh, even on my off time not playing the game, I listen to the Minecraft soundtrack. <laughs> it, nice. it, it's just fun. It's just fun music to listen to. Okay, well, there is no villagers in the damn song. Like, <laughs> there should be. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's just like a, a nice lo-fi EDM type of music. It's just, it, it's just nice music to listen to. I can yeah, that. I think I it's a little. I do know Last of Us is very, it's very good, based upon just it fits the genre fantastic. Like it's a very subtle. Yeah, I think that's key. Like, if you can hit the genre and the mood you're going for, you're going to have a good soundtrack. Yeah. All right. Uh, so, I say, for me, it's uh, Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2. Um, Ooh, that's if, a yeah, damn good soundtrack. Game, if you missed out on this game, let me just uh, go through a few things here for you. Uh, um, before you go through that list, I want you to know that some of these are on my actual playlist still to this day. Oh, oh yeah. that Thank game you. for sure. Oh yeah, uh, Public Enemy with Anthrax, bring the noise. Uh, <laughs> hell yeah, You by Bad Religion, Gorilla Radio, Rage Against the Machine, uh, When Worlds Collide, Power Man Five Thousand, yep. No Cigar by Mullencully, uh, Out with the Old, In with the New, Alley Life, Black Planet, uh, Blood Brothers by Papa Roach, um. Hell yeah, dude. This was just a banger all the way around. Hell yeah. Uh, I think the whole runtime for the soundtrack is like right around an hour, and it is just intense nonstop the whole way through. I dig it. Like, I don't know. Like, you, I still listen to some of this in just a regular rotation. Hell yeah. I don't know now, like, soundtracks these days, I don't know if it's a licensing thing or why they went away from specifically using tracks that fit the genre to just write their own stuff and potentially miss the mark. But that was one of the really good ones that utilized well, like music said, that wasn't theirs. You know what I mean? Like it was well, like said, fit, fit the game, fit the game. Like mm -hmm. they, they did a great job. It was literally them taking what uh, the skaters themselves in the games were listening to. Right. And just compiling them. So some of those bands even had been around, you know, were older bands or had been around for a while and really hadn't gotten that much public attention. And all of a sudden, you know, in the mid nineties, this game drops and everybody wants to know who the hell this band is or who this group is. Like, I'm, I'm curious, like why a lot of like, cause obviously the, the games that get it the most is sports games, racing games, which I guess. So uh, just like specifically sports games, not that, uh, I, I guess uh, Call of Duty with the driving in the car and everything, they get some licensings for some uh, music. Uh, but I think that's one of the bigger issues is actually getting the license, licensings to uh, some of these songs. And it, it, it does help with the longevity that uh, Tony Hawk had in the gaming where they'd be like, hey, can we get this for our game? They're like, oh, the Tony Hawk, I played it as a kid. Yeah, sure, go ahead. Stuff like that. Rather than like you got a new game? You want our music? No. At, at but. the time, no, for that game, Tony Hawk, the second one, came out, like, right a year after. So it really wasn't even that big a franchise. Like I said, most of the bands they grabbed weren't super well-known at the time. So, <laughs> But yeah. I get what you're saying. I, I, I can understand where you're trying to go with that, but you considering they've been licensing music for video games since at least the 80s, you can't tell me it's gotten more complicated now than it was then. That's because fair. Because we've already worked out how to do this and streaming services and, like, you know, YouTube music and all those other... I think the big problem with all of it is the DCMAs, the, the copyright infringement and all that shit. Like, it's good to have a copyright, but at some point you're just hamstringing yourself where you can get more plays 
more money for your music. And it could be or very well just be the uh, record companies. Oh, for sure. But Dr. Bear, what's yours? All right. Mine is Dark Souls 3. Front to back, a fantastic. It fits every single boss that you fight has its own style of music. The main menu is a fucking banger. Like, you, you turn it on, you're like, I'm going to go kill some shit. Ten minutes later, you're dead, and then you're pissed. But cycle of life, man. Like, I love it. It's all just, like, composed instrumental music. There's no, there's very little words, and it's... it's I could listen to that shit all day. I if guess that, that is something to admire. Admi- you should definitely listen to it. That's something to be admired when uh, people creating games actually take like the same amount of time with the graphics and all that to actually like get music that fits specific uh, situations oh, sure. and everything. Mm-hmm. So if, if you take the time to do that, yeah, kudos to you. You're actually making it a little better of a game just for taking the details. Oh, yeah. Oh, hell yeah. All right. So what, <laughs> which uh, franchise Final. and or game would you like to see get a reboot or a, or like a remaster? Start with you, Dr. Bear. You haven't led one off yet. That's true. I have not. Um, I think the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles franchise deserves some love. They're not as popular, so I see why they don't get it. Because it's not big anymore. You know what I mean? Like, it's not like it once was. But, like, Turtles in right. Time was a masterpiece. Uh, they did just release, like, a year or two ago, a game like that on Xbox. Uh, beat em up. Shredder's Revenge. Did not play that. Like, there's a... I'll like, there's games or whatever. Because, uh... You there's games where, like... Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles get incorporated like, oh, come on, come on. It's kart racing, and then Mark uh, Michelangelo is like right there and everything. So it's like they get incorporated, but they just don't get their own game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so it's like, it, I guess it's hard. I, I, is it due to popularity that they don't well, what, what kind create of games? See them do, I guess. Um, because like the old school beat 'em ups are what was most popular, but what? How would you do a new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game? Um, or even just like a uh, reboot. Yeah, a, I mean, honestly, that's... like Turtles in Time on the new engine would be fucking fantastic. Gotcha. Like that in itself. Because a reboot, honestly, oh, yeah. I don't know if a reboot would would work. Like a, a remaster of old games might be the best. Gotcha. I can see that. I'd love to have some of the old Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle games. Like, even the old arcade cabinet, I don't know that I ever got a true port. Exactly. Like, yeah, it's funny, like... At, uh, editing editing the, the cast yesterday, um, I was playing on my Switch, and on, I believe, the the NES or whatever, there was a beat-em-up game that I started playing, and I was like, I kind of do, because there was, like, one that was, like, very 8-bit, but, like, you were able to pick up chains and throw trash cans and shit like that, and I was like, I remember playing this as a kid. These are actually kind of fun. And it's like, same thing with the Scott Pilgrim. Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. Like, uh, they had the video game where it's a beat em up, beat em up game. So I was just like, I actually really enjoy this. But uh, again, I can understand the, it's not very popular, so they just don't do it, I guess. But I think another one that I would like to see, because I have, I have two, is the uh, Power Rangers. They, I don't see? know the last time they made a good Power Rangers game. Yeah, dude. It's been like, years, <laughs> and I've played a fuck out of that game, dude. Fucking I yesterday, I, I I texted the group chat uh, yesterday because I was I asked uh, Swiss if he saw the new Power Ranger movie, the one in uh, 2017. And uh, the reason it, I get brought up, uh, because uh, I was going through Facebook and everything, and it showed, like, the Blue Ranger, but from, like, every different generation of it. And I was like, I was getting like pretty nostalgic over it because I had toys. I, I watched it and all this stuff. Um, and then you mentioned the uh, TMNT and like, I don't have they ever had a Power Rangers game? Yes. Yes, and it was really good. Many, most of them are fighting games of some kind. 
or so I don't I know for the Power Rangers that I played, it was like Turtles in Time almost, where you're like, we're going through a mall, fighting the little putties and shit, which was solid. Mm-hmm. It was a solid game. See, another thing too is like that that has so that has so much different routes to take. It doesn't even need to be a beat 'em up game. Like Power Rangers in general, just the story mode behind that that could be behind Power Rangers in general could be. Oh yeah. A lot. Like you don't have to just do strictly so beat them up. It could be a whole yeah. ass game. Yeah, they've got so, so much lore in canon. They could do a lot with the Power Rangers game. Yeah, no, hundred percent. I'm I'm with that one. The Power Rangers, oh, yeah. like all the enemies that they've ever fought, could be in, in a game. Like it could be an Elden Ring style game where it's open world and you go fight all the monsters. I'd pay eighty yeah, bucks to play sweet. that game if it's done right. You yep, know what I mean? Agreed. Like it'd be great. Agreed. Even if you took like a Dragon Ball Xenoverse approach. Uh, you play as the sixth ranger uh, from some undone franchise. You get to customize your suit and stuff I like wanna that. I want to be the brown ranger. You, and you get... <laughs> Cause I'm the but shit. you get the chance to go back to the different points and like disturbances yeah. in time and fight with all the different rangers. That would be baller. Oh yeah, that'd be dope. Alright, Pumpy. What's your franchise? And Ooh, game. okay. Uh, I not a reboot because I'm pretty sure they like remastered it. All right, I guess it is a reboot. Uh, I want another Portal, like Portal One, really good. Portal Two, I love the story that they did. I found it funny as hell. So having another Portal Three, obviously, like because you can't not just create more puzzles. There's always going to be more puzzles to be created, especially in like that aspect. So having that would be really cool. I like what they did uh, with Portal Two, where you could. Uh, do multiplayer and just have another person with you where you have to use their portals and they have to use yours and shit like that. Um, so I, th- I think if they created another story uh, based off portal, I think that would be pretty cool. I have limited experience with the portal games, but no, they are a very interesting series and that's a great question. I'm surprised there isn't a new portal or some version of that out right now that isn't just remastering them. Yeah, that was a fanta- it was a fantastic game. Like just in the original game, it was so novel in its idea that mm-hmm. everybody just loved the game. Yeah, no, I I would love to see that just for the fact that like I mean to be fair, I think Valve, I don't want to say they're lazy, they just like they know they can take their time cuz they know that you're going to be there when it's there. Yes. Like so Valve but knows what they're doing. Again, they're not pushed by investors to hurry up and get a game out, and you push right. shit games. So that that's another big thing. Like, how long did people wait for Half Life? Oh, forever. Oh yeah, yeah. So half their life. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> think about it. Like it was forever, bro. Dude, yeah. And then they came out with <laughs> a, what, the, the VR one, the Half Life Alex, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm not sure if that did good or not. VR is still hit or miss, man. Like, they got one yeah, where you yeah. shoot creepy yeah. clowns, and then that one's kind of cool. And then they got some regular shitty games, so it's hit or miss. Gives me a headache. I tried VR once on PlayStation. That shit yeah. gave me a headache oh, like, so fast. Yeah. All right, Swiss. What is no, your franchise, right. man? Okay, so hear me out all the way on this. Uh, you see him everywhere still. He's still incorporated in a bunch of games, but I don't remember the last time he had a standalone. Donkey Kong. Uh, Donkey Kong Country was a bunch of really good games. Donkey Kong 64 was a treasure hunt thing. You had to collect a lot of different this and that. And After seeing Pokemon be open world, uh, the new Zeldas that have come out, why can I not have a Donkey Kong game set on Donkey Kong Island? I mean, Mario's got to go on adventures on how many different worlds. Why hasn't Donkey Kong gotten his shot? Because he's lazy. That's a good question. uh, And (laughs) granted, Donkey Kong doesn't necessarily have power-ups, but Jesus, your whole gameplay could be Donkey Kong meeting different people and learning different skills from them so that by the end of the game, you know you've got all this other stuff and i mean there's already all this crossover so why not use some of that crossover i mean mm-hmm. shit you guys will include him in mario karts and stuff like that you'll include him in smash bros but he's not good enough for his own game anymore he's like the redheaded stepchild of nintendo 
<laughs> well, I, I Honestly, mean, think about it. Like, they make Mario. Wario well, and Waluigi have their Mario. own fucking shit. Where's Donkey Kong's? But, it, like I said, Donkey Kong done like one of the new Zelda games, I think, would be awesome. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. That would be dope. No, I completely agree. Like, as soon as, soon as you started that off, you're just like, bear with me here. He's in all these. I'm just like, I need to figure this out before he says it. <laughs> <laughs> did, not, did not know you are going with Donkey Kong. No, I completely agree. That's a... Well, that I would mean, be a good you know, game. From a mechanic standpoint and stuff, again, if you borrow a little bit from, like, Zelda... He's strong as shit. Who gives a fuck? Maybe I'm ripping boulders out of the ground and tossing them at something, you know? Like, give some more depth to that franchise because it, it hasn't had much done since the 64. Mm -hmm. And it and was that limited was like then. 10 years ago, at least. Oh, 20 years ago, bud. Yeah. Like, you're talking 96. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. That's been yeah, forever. Like, that was, uh, I think it was the game that you had to have. That and Zelda were the first two to have. Oh, with the have bongos. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So you know what no, I mean? No, that like, control me... scheme was novel as fuck. I ain't gonna lie. That was pretty dope. Well, we were just figuring out 3D graphics. But, you know, it, look at Mario 64 compared to Odyssey. You know, stuff like that. You're gonna tell me Donkey Kong can't have a game that way? Look at everything they've done with Kirby, even. Mm -hmm. You know, Donkey Kong can't have a game like that? I think it'd be dope. I, I, I mean, honestly... you've got a whole cast of characters. Diddy. All of those guys, I mean, and they're established. And you got the next gen, next gen engines, so like you could make it superbly graphically pleasing. You could have a. That's the thing too. It's like just make a killer game and just perpetuate the free money that you're gonna get. It's like printing money if you made a Donkey Kong game. Nintendo. And that's the thing too. <laughs> they fucking uh, they established such a, a a lore for Donkey Kong and and. Uh, for introducing Diddy Kong and what was the girl's name? Sorry. Oh Christ, Dixie uh, Kong, but, I think. Dixie Kong is one of them. Yeah. So they did all that to be like, yeah, and just end it. Like, I feel like they wanted to do more, but it kind of just got kind of cut off. What was that? It had its own TV show and stuff too. Yeah. So like, it, it, it's just a surprise. Maybe they were just like, nah, they're gonna go with the plumber, not the donk or the. Gorilla, or, but like whatever. <laughs> Ever since Harambe, they really don't want to bring out a gorilla. Dude. <laughs> 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 the discontent from the world. But yeah. So yeah, so that's uh, Donkey Kong. Nintendo, make it happen. <laughs> yeah, Nintendo. Boy, you slack. Oh. Okay, so I I will give you one more game. I would like to see you get a reboot. And that's for uh, Wait. Duck Hunt. What? Why? Because <laughs> just think of the new graphics. It could look so cool. For what? Duck Hunt. Duck Hunt. Duck Hunt? Yeah. No. <laughs> just because. Uh, if, anything, if anything, Duck Hunt is now one of those sad excuses for an arcade game that's nothing more than a cell phone game. Yeah. Hey, don't you no, say yeah. No, Yeah. I, I feel it there, <laughs> but I think it'd be dope. I think it would just be a gimmick. It, it would uh -huh. have no longevity for it. Like, sure, if you wanted to do it for, like, a $15 game for... But... Yeah. Uh, no, I, I not disagree game. with you on that. Well, in all honesty, if that's what we're going to do, then please, Nintendo, just add it to the NES emulator on your online and uh, make it a motion control controller where all I do is point it at the screen and click a button. Hell yeah. I think that'd be dope. You guys have any other games? No, I'm good, man. Um, I thought with Donkey Kong. You went hard with Donkey Kong. I feel you. Still hard. <laughs> Still first. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I'm good. That was a. Uh... All right. Well, we're gonna wrap Portal the episode 3. here. Yeah, Portal Three, Turtles, Sir Power Ranger game, and Donkey Kong. Let's make that happen, folks. But uh, yeah. We will catch you guys next time. Remember, um, we are on the main platforms of Apple Music, Amazon Music, and Spotify for our podcast. So check us out there. Give wait, us a listen. Wait, wait, before we end it. Ready? Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Smokey the Bear. <laughs> <laughs> Only you can rent forest fires, bro. All right.
<laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll yeah. see you guys next time.